Thank you very much. Uh, our next presentation uh, is uh, by Dr. Arin Shi. Uh, Arin uh, completed her PhD at the Yangming University in Taiwan. Uh, this was on studying gene regulation in cancer cells and afterwards uh, received postdoctoral fellowship and uh, was on junior faculty at UC Davis uh, for almost 10 years working on the focal adhesions of uh, molecules in tumors. Uh, afterwards uh, joined the uh, Eric Trans lab at the Providence Cancer Institute and uh, works on uh, T-cell based immunotherapies. Uh, teamwork of course and Irene if anything uh, is here to uh, uh, present uh, their teamwork uh, that was actually awarded for uh, her colleague in the lab and fellow uh, in the same lab with uh, Dr. Trans, uh, Dr. Shonghong Chen who uh, received the 2018 Jack DuPont uh, Memorial Research Fellowship and uh, on single agent immunogenic profiling uh, of new agent reactive uh, cells in uh, human cholangic carcinoma. Um, thank you for our kind of introduction. So, so, so um, I would like to. Uh, Chen Hong is a uh, S and expert in a single cell genomics. So today I would like to talk about how she is applying a single cell technology to hopefully try uh, to hopefully improve the current uh, treatment of cholangial carcinoma. So first I would like to uh, explain what is neoantigen reactive T cell. The, when DNA mutation occurs in the tumor cells, the uh, cell can uh, begin to generate in the mutated protein. This is this non this mutated protein is a non-self protein. So through the antigen process, the cell the H HLA molecule can present a new this new antigen, or so called a new antigen, on the cell surface. So when a T cell use a T cell receptor to recognize the new antigen, the T cell will become activated and then screen the enzyme and the cytokine to kill the tumor cell. So this type of a T cell is what we refer as the new antigen reactive T cell. So how then are we and others um, trying to harness the new antigen response? Perhaps the uh, most direct way is uh, adoptive cell, uh, cell therapy. Briefly, we chop our uh, patient's tumor into a small fragment, which contain a tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Then uh, we culture them with a cytokine, such as ILO2, to enrich them to uh, enough number to test uh, their tumor reactivity. We then select our uh, new antigen reactive T cell enrich and expand them and then infuse them back to the patient's body. In some patients, this type of uh, therapy can work. For example, here show the lung CT from a patient with a metastatic cholangial carcinoma. On the left, before the treatment, you can see, we can see the tumor lesions. And then after treated with the 126 billion tail, uh, which that's a uh, target a unique neural antigen ERBB2IP, we can see a tumor regress, and then this lasts almost three years. However, in other patients with a cholangial carcinoma did not respond to this type of treatment. We're wondering why, so uh, we, when we look at, uh, more closely, we find uh, in a partial response patient, the patient I just mentioned about, in her infusion product, the percentage of uh, new antigen reactivity is 94%, while two uh, progress disease patients are 38 and 10%. This lower frequency may at least explain why this type of therapy did not work in these patients. So our goal is to better study the neural antigen reactive T cell infiltrating cholangial carcinoma. And hopefully we can identify the unique uh, molecular signature and the novel body, uh, novel, 
biomarker of a new antigen reactive T cells. This may allow us more efficiently to select out the new antigen reactive T cell and their TCR for uh, therapeutic use. For example, on the left, the yellow cell represents the new antigen reactive T cell and uh, express the identify the biomarker so we can quickly select them out and specifically enrich them. So currently, uh, how do we isolate the new antigen reactive T cell? So we, uh, the tumors of genomic DNA and the RNA are isolated and uh, undergo the whole exome and the transcriptome sequence to identify the mutations. And then uh, mutated, uh, we since mutated tender mini gene and the then peptide, which contain the patient's mutations, are synthesized and then introduced uh, to the patient's uh, antigen presenting cells. The T cell that uh, we uh, grow from the tumor will be co cultured with the uh, antigen presenting cell expressing the uh, identified the mutations. Then T cell's reactivity will be evaluated through the cytokine ADS bar and the then flow cytometry to detect the cell T cell activation marker such as 41BB or AS40. We then select out the reactivity T cell for the treatment. And then we are currently also developing a single cell technologies to uh, study a new antigen reactivity. Why we need a single cell uh, technology? Take a, for example, a population of uh, people of a different age. If we do the bulk analysis, we only can see the age, which is middle age of a person. And uh, if we use the single cell analysis, it, single cell analysis is able to uh, resolve the, each one of a person into their individual age. This, uh, the importance of this in the uh, uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes that uh, usually only a small fraction of uh, tail is tumor reactive. So after go through the uh, single cell analysis, we were using a bio, bioinformatic analysis to compare new antigen reactive and the non-reactive T cell, and hope we can identify some um, uh, some new biomarker. So uh, we have so far screen uh, finished with uh, one patient through the pipeline I just uh, mentioned about. The first patient is CRI two nine eleven. Um, this patient is a 63 years old female with an intrahepatic cholangial carcinoma. A total 45 mutation was uh, found in this patient. So we synthesized the three tender mutated mini gene and then four uh, peptide pools. For example, the um, TMG1 contains 16 mutations and then peptide, for example, the peptide pool four, which contains uh, 12 um, mutated peptides. We then introduce uh, those mutations to a uh, patient's uh, antigen presenting cell and then co culture with the patient's tail. And then we detect a T cell activation marker for 1BB and then we find the patient's tail react to the peptide pool of 4 and the TMG3. So we um, passing out the um, peptide pool of four and the find the patient react to the MYH9, which is myosin heavy chain nine. So our next question is, do um, MYH9 reactive T cell have a unique signature in the tumor? So, so far we have identified the T cell receptor of a neo uh, a MYH9 reactive T cell, and then single cell transcriptome sequence was just finished, and currently it's undergoing a bioinformatic analysis. Once we got the result back, then we can compare the MYH9 reactive T cell to a non-reactive T cell to identify the novel biomarker. So currently we have finished or collected three patients a single cell and then we finish the first one. So our conclusion is the new antigen reactive tail can be found in patients with cholangial carcinoma, and the single cell transcriptome can be successful performed on 
coin draw casino matter. So our ongoing and future uh, plans, we will compare bioinformatic analysis comparing the gene profile of a much non-reactive T cell to other non-reactive T cell. And if we find a marker that appear to be specifically expressed by new antigen reactive T cell, we will validate those markers with the flow cytomage analysis. And we are planning to perform both single cell sequence and the neural antigen screening for at least the five patients. Our final goal is to explore novel biomarkers to develop more eff effective T cell based cancer therapies. So finally, Chun Hong would like to thank all the EACI staff and the Coenjo Casinoma Foundation's support. Thank you. Thank you. Understandably, uh, all of this extremely novel work, and uh, this truly is a great example and reminder for all of us that it all starts with the bright minds at uh, very early in their career. But uh, it couldn't be really uh, wrapped up without a very important perspective, the perspective of a patient. And uh, it's really a great honor to welcome uh, uh, Ms. Helen Scott, uh, who is uh, a young uh, uh, British uh, mother of three and uh, who is, was being born and raised in London and then moved to Hong Kong. And uh, she was a former backer and then uh, moved into the uh, uh, food business and uh, distribution and then uh, became a blogger for uh, food uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, all this knowledge. And you can imagine, like, in other words, she was having an incredibly active life and then Sadly, uh, three years ago, she got uh, cholangiocarcinoma. And uh, since then, and of course with the inquisitive, incredible mind that she has, uh, she dedicated her time uh, uh, to her family, of course, and to her health. And she literally researched all what we just heard and everything else about understanding our condition. And of course, attending literally uh, endless number of con conferences worldwide to really look into the different approaches for treatment being conventional alternatives. I definitely would like to welcome Helen to talk about this.